Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hope everybody is doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. And guys, today in this lesson, we are going to learn what is parallelism. We are going to learn everything about parallelism, also known as parallel structure or parallel construction. So what is parallelism, how it works, we are going to learn everything about it. The lesson is going to be very detailed. I'll explain you everything in an extremely easy manner. So it's going to be easy for you guys to understand. The lesson is going to be a bit long. So make sure you have a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to have. And make sure you have a notebook with you so you can note important things. I'm excited. I know you guys are too. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Now let's understand what is parallelism. Parallelism, parallel structure. Let's understand what is parallelism. So let's look at the definition and understand it. When two or more items are added in a list, are added to a list, when you have two items or more than two items or components in a list using the same structure and the same form, it is called a parallel structure. So what it means is, when you have a list of items, two or more than two, and all the items in the list are following the same structure and are following the same form as well, that particular list is called parallel. And this application is called parallelism. All right. So now what do I mean by uh, following or using the same structure and the form? See, by structure, I mean... If the first one is a noun, the second one is also going to be a noun. And if there is a third one, the third element, the third component or the item is also going to be a noun. Noun, noun, noun. Adjective, adjective, adjective. Verb, verb, verb. Phrase, phrase, phrase. Clause, clause, clause. All the items are going to be in the same structure. And they are also going to be in the same form. If the first item is, let's suppose, a clause and is in a particular tense, the second item is also going to be in the same tense as well. Now, why is it done? Why do we use the concept of parallelism? To give our sentence a particular flow, to give our sentence a particular rhythm, so that it can enhance the readability of the sentence. Now, look at all these images. What is common in all these images? A particular flow, a particular rhythm. See, all these Images have a particular flow, a particular rhythm. They all are in sync, right? They're following a particular structure. There is a particular gap between all these. Look at the first image. There's a particular gap, right? They are following a particular pattern. There's a structure to it. There's a rhythm to it. So this is what parallelism is all about. All the items in a particular list are going to be the same, are going to follow a particular pattern, are going to follow a particular structure, a noun, 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 an adjective, 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 an adverb, 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 clause, 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 and many more structures that we can possibly have, all right? Now, we are not going to understand what is parallelism by looking at the definition. We have to look at some examples to really understand what it is and how it works. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So let's look at some examples and then understand what it is. All right. Example number one. Unlike my friends, I love playing with kids, spending time with myself and to meditate in the morning. Now, guys, before we understand this, there's something really, really important we have to talk about. See, uh, there are three important things that we have to understand when we talk about parallelism. Number one is the items or the components that we have in a list. We have already talked about them, all right? Number two is the conjunctions that add these components, that add these elements. There are a lot of conjunctions that do that, all right? And uh, or then uh, correlative conjunction, we are going to look at them, all right? All of them. And number three is the anchor or the indicator. Now, this is a word or can be a group of words that indicate that there might be there might be a list ahead of me the indicator or the anchor tells us that there might be a list of items ahead of me all right 
Now, uh, let's look at this example and understand it. Unlike my friends, I love, so you can love something. All right, you can love something or somebody and that could be one thing or more than one thing. So love is the anchor here. Love is the indicator. I love something. I can love multiple things as well. So you can have multiple items as the object of this verb love. I love what? Playing with kids. Item number one. There is a list here. I love what? Playing with kids. Spending time with myself. Item number two. What do I love? I love playing with kids, spending time with myself and to meditate in the morning. So we have three things in this list that are the object of the verb love. I love playing with kids, spending time with myself and to meditate in the morning. But this particular list is not following the concept of parallelism. They're not parallel. Why? The first item is a gerund phrase starting with a gerund. I love playing with kids. The second list, second item is also a gerund phrase starting with a gerund, spending. I love what? Spending time with myself. But the third item, see this is the conjunction and playing with kids, spending time with myself, comma, and to meditate in the morning. The third item is an infinitive phrase. It's not following the pattern. The third item is not following the structure, all right? So this has to be a gerund as well. I love what? Number one, playing with kids. Number two, spending time with myself and meditating in the morning. Unlike my friends, I love playing with kids, spending time with myself and meditating in the morning. This is a parallel structure. All the three items in the list are following the same structure, are following the same pattern and they are parallel now, all right? Example number two. The captain of the team. Now the subject can also be a list of items, but here it's just one word. The captain of the team told. Now told can be an indicator here, can be the anchor. You can tell something and that could be multiple things as well. The captain of the team told every player what to perform. Okay. The captain of the team told every player to perform smartly. How? How? Perform how? Smartly, passionately. All right. So the captain of the team is telling every player to perform in a particular manner. manner. And the captain is telling us to perform in multiple manners. Okay. In multiple ways. Number one, to perform in what manner? Smartly. Number two, passionately. And number three, with aggression. This is not following the pattern. The first item is an adverb. Smartly. Perform how? Smartly. Perform how? Passionately. Second item, also adverb. But the third item is not an adverb. It's a prepositional phrase with aggression. Yes, it's working as an adverb. But it is not following the same structure. This is what you have to understand. It might be doing the same function. But it's not following the same pattern, the same structure. It has to be an adverb as well, all right, following the same structure. So the correct structure, the parallel structure would be the captain of the team told every player to perform smartly, passionately and with aggression can be changed into aggressively. The captain of the team told every player to perform how smartly, passionately and aggressively. All the three items are adverbs, adverbs of manner and are ending with ly. See, when you look at this, it looks nice. When you read it, it looks good. There's a particular flow to it. It looks good. So this is what parallelism is all about. All the items in a list have to be the same, have to follow the same pattern, have to be in the same structure, be in the same form. All right. Now, what joins a list? Let's talk about the conjunctions that I was talking about. What are these conjunctions that add these components, add these elements, add these items? These are then, all right, something is better than something or somebody is better than somebody. So when you have then in a sentence, you definitely will be having two items that will be getting compared. Something is better than something. Somebody is better or was better than somebody, right? 
the second is as adjective as as good as as bad as uh, his uh, performance was as good as your performance all right coordinating conjunctions like and and or only these two coordinating conjunctions can join a list not the other five coordinating conjunctions all right and uh, the last is correlative conjunction these correlative conjunctions both and either or neither nor would rather than not only but also uh, these conjunctions also join a list of items all right uh, we are going to have multiple examples using all these conjunctions and we are going to take a lot of examples to understand a uh, parallelism in a detailed manner all right let's look at some examples and understand this let's start with this example so this is a faulty parallel structure what is faulty about it let's find out together when he was asked to talk about his journey that he has had in the company he started what now you can start something and you can start multiple things so started here is an indicator right is an anchor it's telling us that there might be a list of items ahead of me he started what biting his lips drinking a lot of water and he was acting strange so we have a list of three items three activities he started what activity number 1 biting his lips uh, activity number 2 drinking a lot of water and the third item you have to use and and he was acting strange so the first two items are following the same structure are following the same pattern gerin phrases but the third item is a complete sentence is an independent clause so it's not following the structure and this list is not parallel so we have to make it parallel what do we have to do we have to make it change it into a gerin phrase very simple we can do it um he started biting his lips drinking a lot of water and acting strange acting strange when he was asked to talk about a journey that he's had in the company he started biting his lips he started what biting his lips drinking a lot of water and acting strange that's how easy it is looks good better to read what more can you ask second example most people that are working in this company are young smart and have passion so here's the list most people that are working in this company are young adjective smart adjective and have passion the third one the third item in the list is not an adjective all right is a phrase that starts with a verb so it's not following the pattern what we have to do is we have to use an adjective here most people that are working in this company are young smart and passionate passionate perfectly fine now all right moving to the next example last night a girl walked to me asked my name and gives me her number last night a girl did a couple of things couple of things happened a girl walked to me item number 1 asked my name they both are using the simple past tense a girl walked to me asked my name and gives me her number so the third item is not following the same form it's using the simple present tense and the first two items are using the simple past tense so what we have to do is to make it a parallel structure we have to change the form here we have to use the simple past tense so what we'll do is we'll just change the tense last night a girl walked to me asked my name and gave me her number or we can also um form these sentences in the simple present tense we can also say last night a girl walks to me um asks my name and gives me her number we can do that we can use simple present tense to talk about what some uh, what happened in the past all right next example we wanted money fame and to be secured we wanted what wanted you can want something we could want multiple things in the past now what are they we wanted money noun fame again noun and to be secured that is not a regular noun it's a phrase these two items are just one word one word regular noun and this is 
not a regular noun this is not even a word this is a phrase to be secured so what we have to do is we have to change it into a regular noun we can do it we wanted money fame and security we wanted money fame and security all right next example we can go to goa or pune or we can also go to kerala now when you read this doesn't it sound odd strange doesn't it break the flow of the sentence it does we can go to goa or pune or there has to be a name of another place but that's not the case we have an entire sentence we can go to goa or pune or we can also go to kerala very easy to make it parallel we just have to change this clause into a word we can go to goa or pune or kerala simple right now 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 next example all the students were told now again you can be told multiple things so told is an indicator here is an anchor here all the students all the students now understand this the subject can also be a list of things we don't have a list of things here as the subject because if it had a list of items there would be a conjunction as well which we don't have here all the students were told told what to bring the sheets and the colors item number 1 told what to bring the sheets and the colors and this item itself has two things all right and here in this item bring is the anchor is the indicator they were told what to bring to bring what the sheets and the colors all right and this entire phrase is item number 1 all right all the students were told told what to bring the sheets and the colors and coming on time so the first item is an infinitive phrase all the students were told what to bring the sheets and the colors and to come on time all the students were told to bring the sheets and the colors and to come on time or to be on time all right don't be confused the first item itself has a list in it all right moving to the next example before we come there and start working on your idea i need to know i need to know what you can know something and that could be a list of things you can know multiple things so no is an indicator here no is an anchor here i need to know what when it is happening where it is happening and the names of the people involved so we have three items in this list i need to know what number 1 when it is happening a noun clause number 2 where it is happening again a noun clause number 3 the names of the people involved this is a noun phrase this is not a noun clause and it's not following the same form same structure it's different and when you read it 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 sort of breaks the flow of the sentence all right i need to know when it is happening where it is happening and names of the people involved it is absolutely fine it does give the uh, meaning that we are trying to communicate but it does not follow the concept of parallelism so what we have to do here is change this noun phrase into a noun clause can we do it that's the question yes we can of course we can let's do it together before we come there and start working on your idea i need to know what number 1 when it is happening number 2 where it is happening and who are involved in it how does it look now great right that is the magic of parallelism all right let's take one more example i wish he had three things in him i wish he had three things in him so when you have a colon what a colon does is it uh introduces something that works as the justification or the clarification of something or introduces a list of items so here it is introducing a list of items i wish he had three things in him number 1 honesty number 2 patience number 1 honesty a noun number 2 patience again a noun number 3 and he was more aggressive let's read it first of all i wish he had three things in him honesty patience and he was more aggressive now when you read it you don't feel good it does not have a particular rhythm to it it does not follow a particular structure all right and that's why it looks odd when you read it you sort of feel it there's something weird to it because it's not 
in in the rhythm all right i wish he had three things in him honesty patience and there has to be a noun here as well as the third item so what we can do is we can change this entire clause into a word a noun can we do it absolutely here is the word aggressive uh i wish he had three things in him honesty patience and aggressiveness aggressiveness so we'll change this adjective into a noun aggressive aggressiveness all right so uh this is how the concept of parallelism is used all right so now we know i'm pretty sure now we know what is parallelism what is a parallel structure and what is not a parallel structure all right now let's look at some common patterns that a faulty parallel structure comes in so these are the most common faulty parallel structures that we have in english all right noun noun adjective so one or more items will be a noun and the next or the last one will be an adjective that will break the flow adjective adjective noun adverb adverb adjective gerund gerund infinitive 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 gerund all right the reverse one uh, gerund phrase gerund phrase plus an infinitive phrase that will break the flow infinitive phrase plus gerund phrase infinitive phrase infinitive phrase gerund phrase word word clause the first item a word the second item a word the third item clause or if you have more than 3 word 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 clause right it could be in any order possible right doesn't have to be the same order word word clause or clause word word it can also be all right phrase clause one or more items as as a phrase and the last item as a clause breaks the flow right it breaks the pattern uh 10th adjective plus adverb adjective adjective adverb or adjective adverb or adverb plus adjective and the last one is two or more items in different tenses that also breaks the flow right now what we are going to do is we are going to look at examples of all these cases so that we know how it works how these cases look like all right and we uh, can deal with them if we have to right let's look at some examples case number 1 noun plus adjective i want dedication honesty and smart from all of you faulty parallel structure what is faulty about it the first and the second items are following the same pattern they are nouns i want what you can want something and you can want a couple of things so want is an indicator here is the anchor here i want what dedication number 1 honesty number 2 number 3 smart which is an adjective breaks the flow we have to change it into a noun smart can be changed into smartness there we go i want dedication honesty and smartness pehla structure adjective plus noun adjective adjective noun or just adjective plus noun they can be two items or more than three more than two all right example the girl that i'm dating is cute smart and honesty sounds weird right it is obviously because it is not following parallelism the girl that i'm dating i'm talking about that girl the girl that i'm dating is cute smart and honesty cute adjective smart adjective and the third item before the last item if we're adding things we use the conjunction and cute smart and honesty that's a noun we have to change it into an adjective we can do it honesty honest the girl that i'm dating is cute smart and honest pella structure third adverb plus adjective adverb adverb adjective or adverb plus adjective if two items adverb plus adjective if more than two adverb adverb adjectives adjective or adverb 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 plus adjective any way possible all right we have to do it cautiously smartly and swift we have to do it cautiously smartly and uh, with swiftness we can also say all right again that's not uh, the same structure we have to do it in what manner cautiously number 2 smartly and swift na 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 <laughs> that's an adjective swiftly we have to do it cautiously smartly and swiftly all right that is adverb adverb plus adjective number 4 gerund plus infinitive gerund plus infinitive i love love what you can love multiple things i love teaching and to dance i love what teaching and 
to dance not following the pattern i love the first one is a gerund the second one is an infinitive we have to have the same pattern i love teaching and dancing or i love to teach and to dance that is also possible we just have to uh, have the list in the same pattern all right the next is infinitive plus gerund infinitive plus gerund i wanted you can want something you can want want multiple things as well i wanted what to eat drink and dancing i wanted to eat to drink so to is is getting distributed to uh, with all the all the items all right i wanted to eat to drink and to dancing mm mm-hmm. the first two items are infinitives and the last one is a gerund uh huh that is breaking the concept of parallelism what we have to do is we have to change it into an infinitive can we do it absolutely we can i wanted to drink i wanted to eat drink and dance simple i wanted to eat drink and dance perfect the next is gerund phrase plus infinitive phrase gerund phrase gerund phrase plus infinitive phrase john hates hates what you can hate something you can hate one thing or one person or you can hate more than one thing or more than one person what does john hate him so hates here is an indicator is an anchor here john hates what watching movies number one thing he hates john hates what watching movie number one all right number two drinking alcohol don john hates watching movie movies drinking alcohol and Here's the third item to play with kids. These are the three things John hates. So the first two are gerund phrases: watching movies, drinking alcohol, watching gerund, uh, drinking gerund, working as the object of the verb hates. John hates what? Watching movies, drinking alcohol, and to play with kids. The third one is an infinitive phrase that is breaking the flow. We have to make it a gerund phrase. Can we do it? Absolutely, we can. John hates what watching movies drinking alcohol and playing with kids isn't it simple yes it is all right next one infinitive phrase plus gerund phrase just the same all right look at the example he wanted me to call her he wanted me to call her take her numbers numbers more than one number all right that's that's fine that's doable i can do it He wanted me to call her, take her number, and sharing it with him. So he wanted me to do three things. Number one, to call her. He wanted me to call her, take her number, and sharing it with him. So the first two actions are infinitive phrases. He wanted me to call her, to take her number, and the third item is a gerund phrase. that's breaking the flow all right he wanted me to call her take her number and share it with him infinitive phrases and two is getting distributed with all the items he wanted me to call her to take her number and to share it with him cool next word plus clause so uh, the first item is going to be a word the second item is going to be a word and the third item if we have three items in a list is going to be a clause a clause looks weird when when it is the case all right example the guy was dark tall funny and he was fast too so here we have four items in this list the guy was and these items are subject complements describing the subject the guy the guy was now a person can be in multiple ways the person can uh, uh have multiple qualities all right so was here is an indicator is an anchor here the guy was dark adjective tall adjective funny adjective so now we know we have adjectives in this list and we expect the last one to be an adjective as well the guy was dark, dark tall funny and he was fast too now understand this the last one is a clause is a complete sentence independent clause and it is also describing the subject the guy the guy was dark tall funny and he was fast too but it's breaking the pattern and when you read it 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 looks it it sounds weird all right 
all we have to do in order to correct it, in order to make it a parallel structure, is to change it into an adjective. And we have an adjective here, fast. Simple, let's do it. The guy was dark, tall, funny, and fast. Simple. All right, next, phrase plus clause. So the first or the first two items will be a phrase and the last one is going to be a clause. Again, not parallelism, all right. Example, last night I cooked, I cooked what? You can cook multiple things. Again, cook is uh, an indicator here, is an anchor here. Last night I cooked what? Brown rice, red sauce pasta. I cooked what? Number one, brown rice. Number two, red sauce pasta. And number three, what we ate in his party. Last night I cooked multiple things. Three things I cooked. Number one. Brown rice, number two, red sauce pasta, and number three, what we ate in his party. This is a noun clause. The first two items are uh, noun phrases. Brown rice, a simple noun phrase. Rice, the main noun, brown, adjective. Red sauce pasta, a simple noun phrase. But the last one is a noun clause. What we ate in, in his party. Uh, it does give the meaning and it, it's fine. When you speak like that, it's fine. Nobody's going to uh, point this parallelism thing, all right? It's, it's going to be fine. But when you write it, people might find it a little strange, all right? So make sure, if you can, and we can, make sure you have the uh, items following the same pattern, all right? Following the same structure. So let's just change this noun clause into a noun phrase. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Let's do it. Last night, I cooked brown rice, red sauce pasta, and the thing that we ate in his party. Now, it is a noun phrase, a long noun phrase, which itself has a clause in it. But that does not matter. Still, it is a noun phrase. Phrase, phrase, phrase. Last night, I cooked brown rice, red sauce pasta, and the thing that we ate in his party. So, the thing... Uh, is is a noun here and that we ate in his party in his party is a modifying phrase so we have a noun and a modifier again a noun phrase uh, that is uh, structure number nine all right structure number 10 adjective plus adverb adjective adjective adverb or adjective plus adverb or adjective 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 adverb or adverb plus adjective 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 any way possible all right example i wanted the food to be hot tasty and likely I wanted the food to be in a particular condition what is that hot adjective tasty adjective and the third one has to be an adjective as well is it an adjective no it's not likely is an adverb the I wanted the food to be hot tasty and likely mm, does not make any sense I wanted the food to be hot, tasty, and light. I wanted the food to be hot, tasty, and light. Beautiful sentence. All right. Last is different tenses. Tense A plus tense B plus tense C. You can also do that. All right. That will be too much. All right. Let's not do it. Example. <laughs> After the meeting ended, we went to a mall. We did something. Simple past tense. We went to a mall and we eat Chinese food. This is not in the simple past tense. This is simple present tense. So it's not following the same form. Both these actions have to be in the same tense because we're talking about uh, a particular time and the same time, all right, the past tense. So either we change this into the simple past tense or we change this one into a simple present tense. Let's do it. After the meeting ended, we went to a mall and we ate Chinese food. Number one. All right. This is perfect. Number two. After the meeting ended, we uh, go to a mall uh, and we eat Chinese food. Now, it might look weird to you guys to use simple present tense to talk about something that happened in the past. But sometimes we do it. In storytelling, it's, it's kind of it's kinda normal to do. All right. But again, it, it is your choice. It's absolutely your choice whether you want to do it or not. I'll leave it to you guys. All right. So this was the last structure. All right. 
Now let's talk about the conjunctions that we use in these lists, in these lists to add these items, to add these components. So these conjunctions are then and or both and correlative conjunctions. Both something and something, either something or something, neither something nor something, would rather something than something, not only something but also something. So when you have these conjunctions in a sentence, understand there's going to be things that will be compared. All right. I'm going to show you examples from each case using all these conjunctions. Let's do it. Number one, then faulty parallel structure. My job is better than you. My job is better than we have then. So there are two things that are, that are getting compared. My job is better than you. Which is odd. You cannot compare my job, a thing, with a person. You. My job is better than you. Incorrect. This is a noun phrase. This can be a word. Now, it's not necessary uh, to have both the items in the same uh, structure. That's not necessary. But they have to make sense. Together, they have to make sense. My job is better than yours or your job. My job is better than yours, which means your job or simply your job. All right. As adjective as, as good as, as bad as, as smart as, as fast as, all right. Your work was as good as him. Your work was as good as him. So we are comparing your work with him, which is incorrect to do. You can't do it. You cannot compare somebody's work with a person. Only somebody's work should be compared with somebody else's work. Right? So your work was as good as his work or his. His itself means his work. Alright? As something as, as good as, as bad as. Alright? Okay, next. And we've taken a lot of examples of end. Let's take one more. I wanted what? Money, fame, and to be secure. We've already taken this example. I wanted money, fame, and third item, a phrase, should be a word. And that too, a regular noun. I wanted money, fame, and security from the job. I wanted what? Money, fame, and security from the job. Or... It must be under the bed, it must be under the bed or on the table or the box. Okay. So the first two items are prepositional phrases. Starting with the preposition under. It must be under the bed. Talking about the position of a noun. Under the bed. Second, on the table. Talking about the position of a noun. On the table or the box. This is just a noun phrase. It does not have a preposition. There has to be a preposition as well. It must be under the bed or on the table or inside the box or in the box. All right. Okay. Next is both and both something and something. All right. So uh, both what comes after both and what comes after and both these items, right? What comes after both and what comes after end? Both these items need to be parallel as well. Example, I appreciate both what? Your honesty. I appreciate both. Number one, your honesty and being smart. So the first item is a noun phrase. Your honesty. Okay, starting with a possessive adjective. I appreciate both your honesty and being smart. This is not a noun phrase. Um, it is actually a noun phrase, but it's using a different structure. It is a gerund phrase, all right? We have to make these items follow the same structure. I appreciate both your honesty and smartness. Or I appreciate both your honesty and your smartness, all right? Next, either or. Either something or something. We can either, number one, go to his place. We can either go to his place, do this, or staying here. So what's coming after either is an infinitive phrase. Bear infinitive, we can either go to his place or staying here. The second item, 
But what's coming after or is not an infinitive phrase, mere infinitive phrase. It's a gerund phrase. So let's make it an infinitive phrase. All right. We can either go to his place or stay here. Looks better. We can either go to his place or stay here. All right. Next one. Neither nor. Neither something nor something. We neither invited her nor wanting to do it. We neither invited her. It's a phrase using a past participle. We neither invited her. It's an action, all right? We neither invited her nor wanting to do it. So this is a past participle and this is a present participle. Not the same structure. Let's make them follow the same structure. We neither invited her nor wanted to do it. We neither invited her nor wanted to do it. Perfect. Next, would rather something than something. Would rather something than something. I would rather live in poverty. I would rather, number one, do something. Live in poverty. Then begging for money. I would rather, again, an infinitive phrase. Live in poverty. Then begging for money. Following a different structure. A gerund phrase. I would rather live in poverty than beg for money. All right. Would rather something than something. The last is not only but also. Not only something but also something. He's not only smart, not only smart adjective, but also there has to be an adjective as well. That's not the case. He's not only smart but also does a lot of hard work. Or we can change this phrase into an adjective. Can we? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Let's do it. He's not only smart, but also hardworking. He's not only smart, but also hardworking. Sounds better, right? So that is parallelism, guys. This is what a parallel structure is all about. I hope you guys have understood it. I hope I was able to explain it. So that's all about today's lesson, guys. If you need more examples, I have written a very detailed post a very detailed article on my website about this topic, parallelism. Go check that out. Uh, the link of the article in the description. You can just follow the description and go to the post, all right? And uh, that's all from my side. But your job is not done. On your screen are some examples. Examples of faulty parallel structure. What you guys have to do is, you know what you have to do. You have to correct them. You have to correct the structure. You have to use... The parallel structure, you have to use the concept of parallelism and correct these examples. That's what you have to do. So that's all about today's lesson, guys. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. If you guys are watching English with Ashish for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends, with the people that need it. That... Uh, can be benefited out of it make sure you share the video with those people and if you have any queries any feedbacks do let me know in the comment section below and you can join my facebook group you can join our instagram page as well and uh, links again are in the description and i'll see you guys very soon till then keep learning have fun i love you all so much i'm out namaskar